Welcome back. In the previous video, What is going on, part 1, we explored our repository using git status and git diff. In this video, we'll look at the other three commands that tell us about the state of our repository, git log, git show, and git remote v. We'll be starting where we left off with the git repository from the last video. Git status shows that we still had some uncommitted changes when we finished. But now, let's dive into our first new command, git log. Git status and git diff are useful for examining the current situation, but git log tells us about history. We can think of git commits as save points along the life of our code base, like snapshots in a timeline. Git log provides us with a list of all those commits. I'll run git log on my repository now. We see that this repository has a pretty short history, only two commits. Keep in mind, this does not include any of the files we just looked at with git status and diff because none of those changes have been committed yet. For each commit, git log displays the author and date as well as the commit message. That's what came after the dash m when that commit was made. You will also see this long string of numbers and letters. That's called the commit hash. It's a 40 character long string that uniquely identifies this commit from all other commits in the repository. Each commit has a different hash and we use it to reference that commit in other git commands. Git log has a ton of options you can add to tweak the output and search for certain commits. Again, you can find all of that online. Git log helps us look back and see what commits we and others have made to the repository. It's also great to help us remember when and why we made certain changes. That's why it's wise to use descriptive messages when you commit. A good commit message explains the general outcome and purpose of a change, so you can easily go back and see what happened and why. Let's make a commit now to save the changes we made in the previous video. Git commit dash m, and for my message, I'll say added about page. That describes the feature I was working on with all those changes. Now that we've made that commit, let's run git log again and see what we get. Previously, there were two commits. Now there are three. Here's our latest commit with the message we gave and the current timestamp. By the way, one thing you do not need to include in your commit messages is a list of files that you changed. That is already recorded by git, and we can use the next command to see it. Git show is a command that can be used to see details about a variety of things. I'll just show you how it works with commits. We already ran git log to see a list of all commits. Say we want to dive into the most recent one. We'll type git show and then copy paste the commit hash of that commit. There's so much info here, it fills the whole screen. It starts with the basic info we saw with git log, commit hash, author, date, and message. Below that is the diff of all the files changed. There are several lines here, but the part we care about is the name of the file and the pluses and minuses. The first file is about.html. Since it's a totally new file, all the lines are shown with pluses, but it runs off the screen. To see more, use the down arrow on your keyboard. You can scroll back up with the up arrow. The next file is index.html. It has one line added and one line changed. When we're done scrolling, press the Q key to quit this show command. This is important to remember. Whenever a git show or a git log has too much info to fit on the screen, it will enter into this scroll mode. You need to know to use the up and down arrows, and you need to remember Q for quit. Otherwise, you'll be stuck on that screen, and it's hard to get out. We have one last command to look at in this video. Git remote v is used to see what remote repository or repositories we're pushing and pulling from. Most of the time for us, this is a GitHub URL, but there are other possible places to push and pull. If I only type git remote, this doesn't tell us much. We need to add the dash v, which stands for verbose. Actually, a lot of commands you can run have a verbose flag as an option. It means show me more information. Let's try it again, git remote dash v. 
Now we can see the GitHub repository that we're linked to. Actually, the URL shows up twice. Fetch is where we will pull from, and push is where we will push to. 99.9% .9 of the time, these will be the same. But what if we're in a repo that doesn't have an associated GitHub repository? I'll switch to another repository that I haven't made a GitHub repo for yet. Now I'll run git remote v. As you can see, there is no output at all. This means that this repo has no remote repositories. It has not been linked with GitHub yet. Let's finish up with a quick recap. We'll ask you three questions. First, here are descriptions of the three commands we talked about in this video. Mentally, fill in the blanks with the names of the commands. Pause the video so you have time. Once you've made your choices, resume to see the answers. Git show gives details about a specific commit. It also includes the copy-pasted commit hash. Git log shows a timeline of commit history. Git remote v lets us know if we're connected to a remote repository, and if so, which one. What is meant by the term commit hash? Try to put it into words as best you can. As always, pause if you want more time to think about it. The commit hash is a random looking string of letters and numbers that uniquely identifies each commit in the repository. Each commit has a different hash and we use it to reference that commit. Last question. When a git command displays more information than can fit on the screen, what keys can you use to scroll up and down, and what key do you use to exit that command? Use the up and down arrow keys to scroll and the Q key to quit. That's all for this video. In these two videos, we looked at five git commands that help you see what's going on with your local git repository. Git status helps us see what changes are in our working directory and staging area since the last commit. Git diff lets us see how a certain file has been modified. Git log shows a timeline of commit history. Git show gives details about a specific commit. Git remote v lets us know if we're connected to a remote repository, and if so, which one. Thanks for watching.